As I said in my discussion of the dock scene, I tried writing a larger video for episode 13 before, but it didn't go so well, so hopefully this attempt goes better. I'll be breaking down the episode, focusing on different scenes and topics both big and small. A script of this video, both in English and in Japanese, will be linked in the description. The episode starts with Vivi being sent back in time, and it's nice to see the internal consistency as the time travel visuals are identical to when Matsumoto was sent back in episode 1. We see a more experienced Vivi handle the AI outbreak, and this is interesting too. We skip from when she wakes up to when she hears her song for the first time, and she doesn't bother talking to the AI blonde anymore, nor does she try to plug her cable into her, she just snaps her neck. She does say sorry though, because Vivi is still the sweetest person in this world. However, being kind to the man is why he died, so this time she is strict with him and saves his life. She doesn't bother trying to block or even run from the car afterwards either though, because she knows Matsumoto is coming. She doesn't even bother looking at it, it's such a cool moment. Beth appears just as she did in episode 11, but Vivi has already dealt with the AIs with guns she fought originally, and her earlier appearance means the fight has already ended when originally it kept going much longer after Beth appeared. You may have already predicted it from episode 12, but Vivi appearing here earlier means all of Toark is still alive and their equipment still works, which Matsumoto also checks on. I want to skip over the conversation in the headquarters because it's obvious even for me, but I think it's very sweet that Beth waits for Yui to agree to help Vivi before ordering the other men to follow them. It shows how much she cares about her and how well they complement each other. Yui is clever and kind, which is what Beth needs after being abandoned, while Beth is strong and confident, which is what Yui needs to help her lead Toark. I spoke about the scene at the docks in my previous video, but I missed the symbolism of the crabs. There's a reason they get focused on here. Crabs represent emotions and trust, so it's fitting that they're present for the moment Vivian Matsumoto are finally honest about their feelings and friendship towards each other. At the end of the scene, the crab closest to Vivi even runs towards the crab closest to Matsumoto in the same way she ran to squeeze him, to show how they finally connected in that moment. Crabs also represent rebirth, which is what happens to Vivi in the ending. We see the archive calculating futures again. This was shown in the previous episode as well, but I still think it's scary that all the flowcharts we've seen so far have actually been the archive's calculations. I think it knows Vivi went back in time because it draws a new line now and knows that Vivi could win because it shows her death. It also shows Osamu's body to remind us that there will be no other chances for Vivi to win. Vivi got to talk to Matsumoto and it's also nice that she got to talk with Yui and Beth one last time as well. She kept her promise with the old Matsumoto to not rush into things, so now she keeps her promise with the old Beth to tell her about Kakitani. She also supports Yui's beliefs and tells her that she also wants humans and AIs to work together. This isn't the first time this has happened, but we also see how Vivi stops talking with her mind when she's being emotional as well. She smiles here too. Is this because of her talk with Matsumoto, teaching her to open up more? Or is it because she knows she's going to die? It's very sweet that even now Matsumoto is still surprised by Vivi's kindness as well, given how he pats his own head where she touched it. Vivi had an error when Dr. Saiki died, but she learned to harden her heart after Diva's death, so she doesn't collapse when seeing the dead bodies, instead closing their eyes and offering her respects. It's really sad to see her home like this, and I understand why she'd stop by the very first stage she sang on. I really like Navi here as well. Navi was Vivi's first friend, but Vivi ignored her so she could complete the Singularity Project, so Navi can't understand her anymore or why she does what she does now. Navi just wants her to be diva again, but this is ignoring all the ways Vivi has grown. She even tries to blackmail her with Momoka's image, but doesn't understand that Momoka wanted her to be Vivi too, as in become her own person and more than just the singer she was when they first met. I think this is powerful because only in this episode does Vivi call herself by that name as well. For example, she tells Yui to call her that early on when Yui calls her diva, when in the previous timeline she let everyone call her diva, even Osamu who was her close friend. This is another sign that she is more confident this time after her talk with her new best friend Matsumoto. What makes the scene even sadder is that Navi is only saying these things to protect her, 
Because she doesn't have a body, Navi will die when the satellites fall, and she will also die if Vivi sings her song. In other words, she doesn't care who wins, she just wants Vivi to be alive. I think this is why she did not become insane like the other AIs. It is because she wants the same thing as the Archive, simply because Vivi will only survive if the Archive wins. It is also why the last thing she asks is why Vivi has to be the one to sing the song. In other words, even if someone has to sing the song and die, she will be happy as long as it isn't Vivi. And as an aside, when Navi uses Momoka's image, even though Vivi knows it's a fake right away, she's still hurt by it. I think it goes to show that even a hundred years later, she still feels sorry for what happened to her. I think that's another really subtle and very powerful detail. I'll touch on the AI's insanity in another video, but I still want to point out that all of them still act as if they're helping people. Even in episode 1 and the early scenes of episode 11, they still talk as if they're trying to help people even as they're killing them. That's what I mean by Navi not going insane, because Unlike all of the others, it's fine if she knows what the Archive actually wants, because she doesn't care what happens to humanity, unlike all the others. She just cares about Vivi. The way Vivi walks to the main stage is a perfect recreation of how D.Va did the same thing in Episode 7, which is very clever. The camera even focuses on the lights and then Vivi's neck, though we see the rest of Toak and Matsumoto instead of D.Va's clothes. The lights have changed in 40 years, but that's... Another very clever bit of world building. Vivi wrote her song for Diva, so in a way it's nice that she walks like her too. Vivi practices singing the same way, though she uses one less syllable. There's a close-up of her throwing her head up while singing like Diva later too, at the same way Diva did in episode 9, though this one adds the electric shocks she is inflicting to herself. And before we go on, I just want to say how amazing it is that Vivi has finally found her understanding of what a heart is. I think this is a very beautiful process and worth its own video, but I think it's very sweet that it's her own memories. She says she values her painful memories while showing her fight with Beth and how she killed Grace, and she explains that painful memories are why the Archive chose to kill humans. In other words, the Archive gave up after seeing so many terrible things, but Vivi has the strength to keep going. This is a wonderful second message for us on top of telling everyone to find their own meaning of a heart and motivation. I also really like how we see all the ways Osamu's sacrifice created the perfect plan. Because Vivi knows how the Archive defeated them before, this time all of Toark is going to shut off its power instead, instead of letting the Archive make them think other humans already turned it off. Matsumoto attacks the Archive on its own, because on his own he is fast enough to dodge all of the traps. We even see him fly past the guards the sisters fought. It's in the same room too. I really like this added bit of continuity by showing us the same statue in the roof that Beth shoots down. Vivi does this several times, such as during the Sing My Pleasure sequence at the end of episode 6. It's also clever to show us how the guard AIs react to Beth by realising she's too fast to shoot and try to fight her with their fists, and we even see a human see the logical bullet before saving Beth from it while the second man tells her to keep going. Humans and AI are working together despite the AIs doing terrible things, just as Yui and Vivi wanted. I think it shows just how loyal they are to both Vivi and what they believe in. And it's thanks to everyone's teamwork, humans and AIs alike, and Osamu's sacrifice that Yui is able to activate the jammer and Beth is able to turn the power off to stop the Arayashiki shifting so that Matsumoto can climb the tower. He breaks into pieces to fight the clones off, which is something else he couldn't do while he was with Vivi and Elizabeth. Now we come on to Vivi. Vivi is surrounded by her memories as she sings. I want to analyse her song later, possibly alongside Harmony of One's Heart that Diva sung. But for now it's very interesting that her memories are in chronological order, advancing through each singularity point, minus an early shot of Yuzuka and a scene from the Sunrise arc during the Aikawa story. I think it's telling yet again that the first memory she looks at directly is when she made a promise to Momoka as well, 
I've said it before, but not only was Momoko her first fan, she was the person who inspired Vivi to become who she is now. Not only is she so important, both she and even Navi have remembered her for all of these long years, she was also the first person who ever believed in Vivi, even years before Matsumoto did, and the first person Vivi failed. So it's perfect that she's the first person Vivi thinks of properly when she sings her greatest song, which is also the last thing she'll ever do. The images start to glitch immediately, much like the virus in episode 9 made Diva's vision blur, and the first break we see before we cut to Matsumoto happens during episode 8 when Diva and Matsumoto are tricked. I think that's a very clever choice. After we see Matsumoto, we see Vivi fall to her knees as we also see Diva die, which is also clever, and not only that, we also see Kakitani's death and Asamu, who in this timeline died thinking he failed before even sending Matsumoto back. She sees her time in the museum which is both happy because she got to know Osamu but also sad because she spent 40 years thinking she'd failed her own mission and she'd let Diva down. But once she shuts down the AIs I think she also sees the satellite falling towards her because the archive made one fall as soon as it was about to be deleted to stop her from singing. As an aside I think it's very fitting that Matsumoto uses the same virus the archive created to kill Diva to kill it. Tape-san also put this in a tweet, but it really is Matsumoto getting revenge, even though he acts like he doesn't care about emotions or friendships. I think Vivi is just too weak to look up, even though she's trying to escape from the satellite, but Matsumoto saves her, which is, again, a very sweet moment that shows how close they are now. Her memories break, but the last thing she sees is her audience on the small stage from 2076. We know it is 2076 because the child who looks like Momoka is there and looks the same, though she is sitting in a different place than she was at the start of episode 3. Navi claps to congratulate her for doing what she believed in before she dies, and before Navi dies as well. I don't know if it was one of these two things, or both of them, but in her confusion, Vivi thinks she's performing and dies thanking her audience. Even in death, she wants to be polite and respect them. She always cared for her audience, and so did Diva, and she has now sacrificed herself for them. And she had to sing her song for hours, even before Matsumoto shut the archive down so that her song could reach everyone as soon as possible. The song was designed to kill AIs, and she was electrocuting herself the whole time. She was surrounded by a blue light too. Was that her own blood evaporating? She experienced all of that for much longer than all the other AIs. And not only that, she surrounded herself with painful memories and sang about how she was always surrounded by conflict too. So not only was she in pure physical agony, she was in emotional agony as she died as well. It's so cruel. And speaking of memories, she gave them up in order to sing her song. We even see them being destroyed and glitching. And even... After the credits, she remembers nothing. And all of this happens right after she realises that her memories are her heart and what's most precious to her. I think that makes her death even more painful. In the ending, we see Beth doing the heaviest work to help people, and the man from the beginning has survived. Even though he is scared of Beth, thanks to being saved by Vivi, he knows not all AI are bad and stops a younger man stomping on one while the other humans just watch in horror. Only some of Toak survived, but thanks to Vivi's sacrifice, humanity as a whole survived as well. The new Vivi in the ending wakes up just like the old Vivi did, but one of her eyes twitches. Maybe this is because this is her coming to life for the first time? As soon as she opens her eyes, it is obvious this is Vivi because the numbers on the right are always the same, even when she is Diva. It must be some sort of physical code. Matsumoto seems to know who she is and about her past, and I think he is the old Matsumoto because he may have hidden himself in the spare cube. Vivi doesn't remember anything, so I think she is a new personality. The website explains that all AI brains create a completely different personality when they are activated, and humans don't know how they work which is why Diva's personality is the exact opposite of Vivi's. This Vivi seems different too. She sleeps in her chair the same way and talks the same way as first, but smiles much more easily than the first Vivi did until she opened her heart to Matsumoto and later to Yui and Beth. Everyone's clothes are similar to what we wear now in 2021, 
so it's possible technology regressed after the archive was destroyed. Even though there's a blue light in Vivi's piano and the existence of AI shows that there is still some futuristic technology in the world. I have to respect the archive for accepting that it would die if Vivi decided her own future was the correct one and it also knew that it would not be rebooted. I think it goes to show that it just wanted to complete its own mission despite its extreme methods. And this is another parallel between the archive and Vivi. Both of them ended their missions in the ultimate way, both giving up their lives to help humanity and make them smile. I think it's also nice that Vivi's room is based off of the old Vivi's room in the archive, including the piano. I think it's because everyone hopes this Vivi will write her own songs as well. Vivi thinks while looking at the crowd but isn't shocked. I think it's because she knows subconsciously that she is meant to be a singer, maybe because of some pre-programmed knowledge, and is happy to do it. Though it's interesting that Matsumoto doesn't tell her to sing with her heart. He knows how important singing with the heart is to her, so maybe he just wants her to have a happy debut and think about difficult things later? After all, Vivi didn't tell him what her heart was either. I think the screen becoming narrow as Vivi walks shows that this is a new beginning for her, and the screen becoming full again is like changing to a different timeline, to show that this Vivi can go on to become anything. Short hair also represents a new beginning, so I think this is the correct interpretation. The original Vivi suffered so much, so I hope this one can be happy. I also think it is clever that the original Vivi used both names, both Vivi and Diva. While Diva was only ever Diva, and this new Vivi is only ever going to be Vivi. This is who the old Vivi and Momoko wanted her to become, an amazing singer who lives a happy life. The original Vivi is dead, but I hope this new Vivi can become exactly what she wanted her to be. Now, as Vivi herself would say, thank you very much for your kind attention. This video became much longer than I expected, but I hope you liked it. Please let me know what you thought in the comments. And please remember that you can read all of what I just said in both English or Japanese on my website, which is linked in the description. Thank you again for watching, and please consider subscribing to help me out. And as always, have a great day.